Hey there, welcome to my channel. My name is Linda. Today we're going to be working on a DIY rustic farmhouse fabric Santa. So let's get started. First off, I'm going to show you a pattern that I have just free handed and drawn. And of course, I will have the link down in my description box for a free printable. You can go to my blog and print this out. So one of the papers here is going to be the hat pattern. And you're going to kind of come across to the bottom. I've marked it bottom and top piece. And basically what you want to do is cut these out and then add the dotted line that's where you're going to tape and combine them together and i wrote the instructions here cut the pattern match the dotted lines and tape together to form the hat and you're going to cut two of that okay the same thing for the santa body here this is on page two again i've got it marked the bottom here this is number one piece number one this is the bottom Okay, and then on this page three, here's the Santa body right here, and this is piece number two, and this is the top of the body. Again, you're going to cut everything out and then at the dotted lines, you're going to match that together and then tape it to form the one long piece of the body. Okay, and of course, instructions are down here again. Cut Santa body one and two, match the dotted lines, tape them together to form one large piece, and you're going to cut two of the fabric for this piece. And here's what it looks like taped together, one nice big piece. I had to do that, of course, because, you know, my paper's not that big. And then on the third page here, along with the Santa body, there's a Santa head. You're going to cut two of that out of your fabric. And then there's a pattern here for the Santa bag. You'll cut two of that as well. Now, you may not want to add the Santa bag to your piece here. It's up to you. And remember, there's one, two, three pages here. Of course, like I said, I will have the link in the description box to the free printable on my blog. So these are the fabrics I'll be using. The bottom fabric is from Walmart. The top stripe fabric is from Hobby Lobby. And then at Walmart, I buy my muslin, and they have like a light and a dark fabric uh, that you could choose from. I'm going to use this little bit dark muslin it goes better with the colors of the fabric I'm using so I'm pinning my body to the uh, larger plaid fabric here checked fabric whatever you want to call it and I'm just going to go ahead and cut that out here cut that bottom off I did not lay it on the fold because we wanted two pieces versus one continuous piece okay and then I've got my hat here I'm doing the same thing and I'm cutting that piece out two pieces of course cut that bottom folded edge off and now I'm cutting out the fabric for the Santa bag and what I'm doing as you can see here is I'm just extending it a little bit beyond the sides I'll cut the top and the bottom right at the pattern level but I just decided personally I wanted to make my bag just a little bit wider just because no rhyme or reason to it, but these are just hand-drawn patterns. They're not professionally done. So I just kind of adjust and cut where I feel like I want to. And then off camera, you can see the muslin cut out there for the head. Two pieces for that, of course. And now these are what you need ready to start our project. For our project, you can use Beacon Fabri-Tac glue. You can use hot glue. Don't laugh at my hot glue gun or a sewing machine. Um, so first thing we're going to do is you want to take your fabrics on mine. It's a little bit hard to tell, but you want to put right sides together, which are the nice sides together. And if you're a gluer, you're going to come down one side, the bottom, and up the other side, right along that edge there, and you're going to leave that top edge open, okay? If you're a sewer, go ahead and take it to the sewing machine and sew those three sides, leaving that top edge open, which is your narrowest uh, side on this fabric, okay? So I'm just sewing this all the way down. And then we're going to take a look here, working with the body, the gluing option, okay? So Fabri-Tac or hot glue gun, what you're going to do is once you've glued it together, you're going to take it and just turn it inside out or right side out, I guess I should say. We're turning the inside right side out, okay? And then you're going to come into the corner, right at that corner there, and you're going to pull it apart, okay? And you're going to tuck that little pointy piece in so you have kind of a little, like, inside pocket there, okay? And then we're going to turn it around and do the same thing on the other side. Kind of spread it out a little bit. Take that point and tuck it inside. And you have just kind of this little hole here just like that. Those are the areas we're going to work in. So if you're a gluer, because what we want to do is make this nice square bottom here so our piece will stand up. So if you're a gluer, you're going to take your Fabri-Tac or your hot glue gun. You're going to glue those 
inside those little holes there, inside those recesses. Okay, I'm going to pin mine just to, you know, pretend I've glued it so that we can move on to the next step for all those of you that glue. Okay, then what you're going to do is once it's glued, you're going to turn it back inside out. Okay, and you're going to have these little pieces sticking out here. Then here's where you're going to take your glue and you're going to glue it down and then fold it over. Okay, matching the point of your seam to the seam of your fabric there where you glued. Glue and hold it over just like that. You're done if you're a gluer. Wait for my instructions. Now for those of us sewing, let's go back and work on this body portion. Our fabric is inside out. What you're going to do is pull it apart just like I showed you earlier. We've got that point right here. Nice and easy. I'm going to go ahead and pin this across. We're going to come around to the other side. We're going to pull it out. Right, kind of flatten that out so we've got a point there and pin it. Okay, and this is where we're going to sew. We're going to just sew right underneath where we pinned it here. Perfect. Got that going on. I wanted to give both options here. So this is what it's going to look like if you're a sewer. Okay, do the other side. Wonderful. We're still inside out here, right? Now we're going to glue those little sides down. This is just going to help keep it nice and stable on the bottom. Just glue it. I'm sorry, I'm a little off camera here, but I'll show you what it looks like in a minute. Glue those points down along your seam, and then this is what it should look like. Okay? All right. Now we're back to everybody together. Okay, now we're going to work on the hat. The hat's a little bit different. we got to kind of do it in pieces. If you're a gluer, you're going to just glue one side, one long side, okay? Then set that aside. We'll come back to it, and let's go to our Santa bag. If you're a gluer, you're going to glue all the way around, leaving that top little portion open. Then, still again, if you're a gluer, you're going to glue your head all the way around, leaving that straight edge open. Okay, those of us that sew, we're going to go ahead and sew our bag all the way around. Again, leaving that top straight edge open. Okay, this is what it looks like, and we have our straight edge open, and go ahead and flip that right side out. If you're a gluer, you also can flip your Santa bag right side out. Okay, get that ready. Then we're coming, those of us that are sewers, we're sewing one side of our Santa hat, just like the gluers did one side and set it aside. Now, the gluers, you already, I know I'm going back and forth, you already have your heads uh, glued together. So us sewers are now sewing around our head here, leaving that straight edge open. Now, all of us are again on the same track, gluers and sewers. Once your piece is together, now just start making little slits all the way around. This is just going to help it so that your round area of the head stays round when you turn it right side out, so to speak. Otherwise, it, it kind of might look a little square. So once you make your slits, then everybody flip your pieces out. <laughs> back and forth, back and forth. So now we have a nice kind of round looking head at the top, okay? Now, I'm going to go ahead here and stuff my head. And I'm doing this because I need to know how fat my head is going to be so that we can work with our hat. Okay, so go ahead and stuff your heads as fat as you want them to be. I like mine stuffed really tight. Okay, and then we're going to take that stuffed head and put it in our hat. And what you're going to see here on the left hand side is our hat's just a little bit too big there. And I'm sorry, I just never adjusted the pattern. I always adjust it in my sewing process. So Let's adjust it here, and hopefully it's not too confusing. I'm adding a picture here. What you're going to do is start, it's about an inch in, and you're going to start kind of at the diagonal. See as that comes at the top, and then slowly you're going to get your gluing or your sewing to come back more toward the edge of the fabric as you go all the way down to the tip of the hat. Okay, hopefully that's understandable. Let me sew the rest of this down a ways. I didn't want to speed this part up. Because I knew it might be a little bit different to explain and probably should have just adjusted the pattern, but I didn't even think about it because I just always do it in my sewing uh, process, like I said earlier. Then once you get that done, just kind of cut off that excess and here our hat is all ready to go. And I will say it's okay if you have like a funny little bump where we had to kind of come in at a diagonal sewing or gluing because when we flip it right side out, okay, um, Later on, we're going to kind of crinkle and wrinkle our hat, so it's going to hide all of that in the process, okay? Once I kind of go uh, right side out here, you'll see I never sewed the end, 
And I did that on purpose because that way I don't have to worry about it coming to a point or anything. I just kind of take it and pull the threads on it, make it look a little bit rested and leave it just like that. Once that's done, you're going to come in with some batting or some stuffing and just really loosely stuff this. I mean, just real loose. It almost looks like there's some spots that doesn't have any stuffing in there, okay? Because we want to be able to crinkle and wrinkle the hat. And then you're going to come in and you're going to stuff your little Santa bag all up. I like to stuff this, you know, fairly tight, but, you know, leave about a quarter of the top left without any stuffing so you can kind of you know crinkle it like that give it a little top and then for our body those of us that are sewed or glued if you haven't turned it right side out yet go ahead and get that done and our bottom should uh, look just like this here in a minute with a nice square square bottom for sitting upright so whether you're a gluer or a sewer, this is what our end result should be. We should all be at the same spot. Now we're going to use some rocks. I had these from Dollar Tree. You can totally get some from the backyard. I've done that too. And what I want to do is I want to add a little bit of cotton fluff down here at the bottom first. And then I'm going to take some of these rocks and put them into a little sandwich bag. I don't want to just pour the rocks in at the bottom because if you're going to like sell this at a craft show, then you're going to feel those lumpy, bumpy rocks. So I like to put a little bit of stuffing in the bottom, put some rocks in a little baggie. I'll kind of tape it closed here and then add the baggie on top of that stuffing. And then I'll come in and add some stuffing around the perimeter of the bag and on top. So that bag of rocks is you know, encased in all that nice stuffing. So, you know, it kind of takes away the, the pointiness and stuff of filling all the rocks in there, if you understand what I'm talking about. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm just putting stuffing in and around that bag a little bit. And then I will stuff my uh, body all the way up to the very tip top, leaving about a half an inch or so unstuffed. So then what I'm going to do here, I just want to make my top edge nice and neat. You could skip this part because we cover it all up, but in my brain, at least I know I did it. I'm just adding some Beacon Fabri-Tac glue here, and I'm just folding down that inner top edge, just like this, so it's all nice and neat. Okay, and now we're going to add our Santa head. I will probably do about a half inch, well, that's about an inch, of the head down inside of the um, body matching kind of the seams of the head to the seams of the body. Now here's another part here where I want to show you something. When you put the head inside the body, again, because of my drawing skills, there's going to be a little gap on the front end. So on the back side, we want it nice and flushed. On the front end, when you go to glue it, you can just make a little fold over seam here. All of that will get hidden by the Santa beard, okay? So <laughs> no need to worry about that one. And that was a little bit easier to explain, wasn't it? So again, on the back side where we're going to start, we want to make that nice and flush. So I'm going to start adding my glue right here. We're going to get our head inside again, about an inch in. Right up against that back side, nice and flat. So we have our, <laughs> make sure I'm all flat on the back here. Because we'll cover at the top of that body where it goes the head, but the back of the body, you're going to see it all. You want it nice and flat. Then as we get to the front, you're going to, you know, start gluing and then make your little fold over adjustment here. Perfect. And you can make a couple adjustments, like I said. And I'm going to bring in some burlap trim from Dollar Tree, some pom-pom trim from Hobby Lobby, uh, this macrame twine that was gifted to me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, some of this other burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree and this red and cream twine from Dollar Tree. And this is like bells, like on a like garland type thing. I got it at Joann's. I cut just a couple of these off and they have tendrils on them. So I just curled them up around a paintbrush. And then I'm bringing in some more rusty items here. I didn't actually rust these myself, trying to save a little time this year. From uh, Factory Direct Crafts, I believe is the name of it. I'll have the link down below to them and to these items that I bought. Very reasonable and you get a lot for your money. So what we're going to do is going to hide that top little seam with some of our thinner burlap trim here kind of finish it off and make it look nice. Glue that on with the Beacon Fabri-Tac glue or of course your hot glue gun. Everything's kind of gluing from here on out. And then what I'm gonna do is go ahead and fold the hat down now as well, about a half inch at the top edge, adding the Beacon Fabri-Tac glue and just folding that down so it's all nice and neat, just like that. And then we're gonna put it onto the head. now. You can see here my head, I only have about an inch of head showing, okay? So we cover most of the head up, just about an inch of head showing. And then we're going to go ahead and glue that hat on all the way around. Because really on the head, all we want to see 
mostly when this project is complete is some eyes and some cute little rosy cheeks. That's it. And then I'm taking some of that pom-pom trim at the top or the is that the top of that? The top of the head, bottom of the hat. How about that? And we're going to glue that all the way around. Bottom edge of that hat. And then we're going to add some more of that burlap trim like we used at the neck area. And we're going to glue some of that on so it looks all nice and, you know, cohesive together. Try not to speed this video up too much because it's only one project this time because it takes a little while to put together, but it's fairly easy, I think. And you, I know you, I've been getting lots of requests for this, so here it is, and you're welcome. <laughs> now at the bottom, we're going to take the other burlap trim. We're going to go from like the middle of the body here. We're going to come all the way down. <laughs> Still laughing at myself, and you're welcome. Okay, we're going to come all the way down to the edge, about one inch from the bottom. And this is, I mean, you don't have to do this either. You don't have to add this trim. I just want a little bit more decorative. It's just up to what you want. Once I glue that down about an inch up from the bottom, I'm going to take some more of this, and then I'm going to come across the bottom this way as you can see here i think it just gives it a little bit more detailing on our little santa suit and we'll just kind of keep gluing this all the way around till we finish that part up and again you don't have to add this on there i've done santas without it before it looks perfectly wonderful now we're going to come to the hat area here and we're going to just do some crinkling and wrinkling i'm just adding in some beacon fabrica glue kind of holding it together um, till it sets up and I just add, you know, just kind of some near the head and then some in the middle because I want it to kind of the hat to just lay over, right? So I crinkle and wrinkle it and then I think it adds a little bit to the rustic charm of it. Add a little bit on the longer edge of the hat here. Perfect. You'll probably see some uh, straight pins sticking out of this in a minute. Um, you can see right up above in the hat, you can see the blue straight pin there. Now I'm taking a pencil and marking some eyes. And I like to mark them really close together. I'm just using some black chalk paint and a paintbrush that has a really flat handle there. And I'll dip it in. You can see my little practices, practice eyes here. I dip it in and then I just push it onto the head. And you only get one or two tries. Otherwise, your eye is going to start getting larger and maybe larger as you try to fix it. So just one or two little dips on the head and be done with it. Don't try to fix it because you'll have one small eye and one large eye, trust me. <laughs> While that's setting up, I'm gonna use this Distress Oxide ink in the Color Worn Lipstick. You could just use some blush or something from your makeup if you want. And I'm just adding some cute little round pink cheeks. Okay, and then letting that dry further because that paint takes a while to dry. I'm taking some of that red and cream twine, knotting it onto the end of the hat. And then just making a little knot at each end here. Get that tied and kind of cut off the excess. Perfect. And then I'll just kind of, you know, put it together so it's not sticking straight out on either side. And then I'm using a couple of, uh, here actually, this one's a pine cone. Little pine cones you can get from Dollar Tree. Perfect. And then a couple of rusty bells coming in now. And I will add a little um, strip of fabric to that later. We'll come back to it because I decided it needs something more. All right, now we're going to work on our Santa bag. So I've got a strip of that muslin fabric. It's probably about a half inch wide strip. And it's some of this strip of fabric, muslin fabric, that I'll add to the hat later. And I just kind of want to almost tie it off, not quite all the way getting a little lip of our bag open. I don't want it too tight because I'm going to start adding in some greenery underneath that muslin strip. So adding a little bit in here where you can add anything you want. You don't have to add any greenery. I'm adding like different things of greenery that I have, just little pieces. I just always like to add a little something, something to the bag. Got to make it a little bit decorative. And then I'm going to add in some of these uh, beaded pit berries I love to get from Hobby Lobby. Add some of those in and add as little or as much or as none as you like. And then I'll, once I get that in there, I'll go ahead and tie my muslin into a bow. And then I'll kind of cut off the excess, making them a little bit long. And then I'll just kind of glue them, spot glue them uh, onto the bag just a little bit. See where I want it to lay and just kind of spot glue it just so it lays kind of fun. Perfect. Then I'm going to bring in that red and cream uh twine tied into a bow here. I've got some nice long tails because I'm going to add a, one of them rusty jingle bells onto each end of that. Then I've got some of that 
uh, rusty wire. I love this because it's like um, double wire, you know, twisted wire. And I'm taking the ends and kind of or, uh, twirling it around the paintbrush, leaving the center just flat. And then I'll glue that flat piece right across that twine bow. And then I will glue that rusty star right over the top of that. Perfect. And then I'll go ahead and tie a knot at the end of each of my bells so those don't slide off. Wonderful. And then this is what our little Santa bag looks like. I think it's so cute. Now we're going to move on to the beard for our Santa. Now this is, I think it's Mongolian long hair fur that I get off Etsy. I'll have a link down below for you. You can find something similar at Joann's, but the fur isn't as long haired. Okay. What you need to know when you go to cut this is you can't just cut through it like normal. Otherwise the beard stuff is just going to shed and shred all over. You kind of have to split the fibers apart till you see the backing well enough. And I'm going to cut this down to about six inches. So um, then when you go to cut, you're kind of, you'll cut a little bit of fur, but not so much. You're mostly cutting the backing of the piece. And then once you do that, just go ahead and kind of, you know, comb it out and make it look nice. And then what we're going to do with the top edge is just add a little glue and fold that down. So that's all nice and finished off. Because that's going to go right up against the face. And then you're just going <laughs> to attempt to add <laughs> glue all over the back of this. It kind of gets stuck in all those little fibers and your tip becomes nice and hairy. But try to get glue on the back of your fur piece here. And then like, wait for it. Here comes the beard. Wait for it because the beard just brings it to cuteness and lay it on. And I love it. It just brings this whole Santa together. Isn't that stinking cute? I just love it. So get that into place. You're lining the beard right up at the top of, you know, where the body meets the head. Get it all glued on all the way around, pressing it down. So cute. And then you can kind of start to fluff it up a little bit, which makes it even cuter. I know. Love it. And now here I am adding a little bit of that muslin fabric piece I had left over from the bow on the bag and just adding, just tying a little piece right at the top there. I think it just needed something more here. Just tying a little knot here. Nice frayed piece of fabric. Perfect. And now I have a piece of that macrame cord. I know this part's going to look funny as we're going to do it, but it's cute. It's about a three inch, four inch piece. I've tied a knot at each end and I'm going to glue part of that right at the top. And then I'm going to take some of that twisty wire and again, curl it around the paintbrush like I did for the bag, glue it on top of the cord and then add a star right on top of that cord. And then a couple of rusty bells here. Now it's starting to come together a little bit more, pressing it on either side of that macrame cord because you're like, what is she doing? And not a piece of rope hanging off the head. Looks perfectly cute. You'll see it all here in just a minute. And we're going to get our bag into position. We're just going to beacon Fabri-Tac glue that bag right on. It's going to stay perfectly wonderful. And then we're going to go ahead and glue our bells right to the front, adding a little more detail. And guess what? That makes this project complete. So I hope you enjoyed how this project turned out today. Please give this video a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below and let me know if you're going to make this cute Santa right now because you might want to get started. I don't know. Maybe you want to make a couple in different colors. You want to give some away as gifts. I mean, those are just some options for you. I will say, because people ask me and I, I just remembered that um, when I make these and I make them for a craft show, I sell them for about $25 a piece. And that's in our area. It's a little lower priced area. So you can kind of take it from there. Okay. If you're new to my channel, you just wandered in here and you're checking things out and you're digging what you saw before you click off, make sure you hit that red subscribe button and notification bell. So you don't miss out on another video from me. Before I go, I'm going to leave you with one final thought. I want you to really hear these words. Jesus is the light in your darkness. His warmth brings bright hope for all your tomorrows. Give him all of you to hold and allow him to keep you safe. Be lifted up by his strength. His shield, it protects you. His sword, it slays your enemies. His truth, it guides your life. His salvation, it sets you free and carries you into a future of promises. A future that holds all you could ever need or imagine. His grace and mercy, they will sustain you. Do not go into the night without hope. Do not give up. Do not be robbed of your joy. Do not let the enemy bring in dark thoughts or bring you into low and dark places.
Hold on to your hope for healing from a God who is your powerful physician. Hold on to all the promises that God has spoken in your life. Allow his mighty river of abundance that flows down from his heavenly throne to flow in and fill your life. Allow it to give you peace and rest in his shelter. Allow him to be the rock on which you stand and let his light guide your path. Let him be your comforter in time of need. Lift up your head, sweet child. Lift up your head and feel his presence this very moment. Let it fill up your heart with the love that he has for you and let it lead you into everlasting happiness. I thank you for sharing your time with me and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.